Aside from having mild winters and really good bourbon, there are many other reasons to consider Kentucky as a great state to retire in. So I bet you have lots of questions and you're wondering about things like state taxes. Is Kentucky a tax-friendly state for retirees? How high are the property taxes here? What's been the current median home price? We're gonna cover cost of living and show you a couple specific neighborhoods that are attractive and desirable to many retirees here in the central Kentucky area, including areas of Elizabethtown and Bowling Green. So we're doing all that right now. So what's going on everybody? My name is Val Hardesty. I am a local realtor here in the central Kentucky area. My husband and I, Jarrett, work together as a team, the Hardesty team. If you're new to our channel, welcome. This is called Central Kentucky Living. So is Kentucky a good place to retire? Our short answer is yes, we think so. And that is because Kentucky is typically favorable toward retirees as it fully exempts social security income tax. And Kentucky also has relatively low sales and relatively low property taxes. So this is early 2023 and you are welcome to do your own research and Google state tax information on retirees in the state of Kentucky. So this is just a general breakdown of what those taxes are like here in the state so you have a basic idea. So we've already covered that Kentucky exempts social security income from taxation, but other forms of income are also exempt like pension, 401k, and IRA. Those are exempt up to a total of $31,110 per person. The sales tax in Kentucky is 6% and the average property tax is 0.83%. There's also a Kentucky homestead exemption for seniors who are 65 years and older who own and occupy their home. And that amount changes annually, but according to some research I did in 2021 and 2022, that amount was the same, $40,500. And that is subtracted from your assessed value of the home. Now there are other taxes such as capital gains tax and an inheritance tax, but you'll have to do more research or talk to your CPA on how that inheritance tax might affect you depending on your relationship with the deceased. Now there are more reasons to consider Kentucky for retirement, such as cost of living. Uh, Kentucky is typically about 5% lower than the national average. Calculating cost of living typically is based on the major things, housing, food, healthcare, transportation, energy costs, and taxes. But Kentucky's also about 13% lower in cost of living compared to a lot of major cities. So when comparing specifically an area like Bowling Green in Southern Kentucky, for example, compared to a major city like Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm using those examples because we get lots of commuters who live in Bowling Green but, but work in Nashville, Bowling Green is about 17% cheaper to live than in Nashville, Tennessee according to some websites. Now you're gonna do some research and see there are some differences in research data that you're gonna find. So that number might fluctuate. But the biggest difference in cost of living is clearly in this case gonna be housing. In late 2022, the median home price in Nashville was 445,000. That's on the low end of 484,000. The median home price in Bowling Green at that time was 281. That's on the low end of 299. So somewhere between 281 and 299, and even up to the median being 330 in the 42101 zip code. Now the median home price in 2022 in Elizabethtown was 245,000, and that's on the low end of 285,000. Now all this has gone up significantly since our first cost of living video, which was done, I wanna say a year and a half ago. <laughs> you can scroll back to it. We did a cost of living in Kentucky, and I believe, this was before COVID and the median home price in these areas was like 175. Pretty hard to believe, isn't it? When coming from somewhere like California, wow, what a difference. Housing has gone up and in 2023, that's what you're looking at. Somewhere between 300 and 450 being the median home prices in these areas. All other figures of cost of living in these areas are pretty much the same. I mean, you can do your own figuring as far as what those differences might be for you as far as um, income tax or sales tax or 
what groceries might cost or how you run your electric and heat and what those things might cost you. But typically in the central Kentucky area, even compared to a place like Nashville, Tennessee, like they're all kind of the same. Again, the biggest difference in cost of living is home prices. So Kentucky, in comparison to Tennessee, when it comes to taxes, there is a difference. And you're probably already aware of that, but in Tennessee, there is no state income tax, which is awesome. But their sales tax is between 7% and in some jurisdictions up to 10%. It's kind of neat to see, but living in the South Central Kentucky area, a lot of people will go down to Tennessee to shop on their tax holiday weekend, which I believe happens once a year. And this year, I think it is in July. July 28th to be exact. <laughs> now I've gone to the Opry Mills Mall, which is just an hour south of Bowling Green. I have gone there the day after the tax holiday weekend and the place is a mess. <laughs> I have to tell you, everybody goes and shops on free tax holiday weekend. And so you can shop and not be charged sales tax the whole weekend. And apparently the mall is super crowded. So if you don't mind the crowds, you can save quite a bit of money, seven to 10 percent is a big deal. So a lot of people take advantage of that weekend. Um, and it's quite apparent because when I was there the day after, which I believe was Monday, I was shocked that number one, the mall was dead and it's a huge mall. It was not crowded at all. And I'm like, okay, it's Monday. But at the same time, the place was a mess, like clothes everywhere. You know how they, they're supposed to be like all folded nicely on the tables, right? No, no, no. They were not folded nicely. It was all picked through and rummaged through. And you know, the employees are like, oh, you missed tax weekend, didn't you? And I'm like, okay, this must be like a real thing around here. So it is, it's a real thing. And you can just hop the border and shop to your heart's desire that weekend and pay no taxes. Now I have heard that in some jurisdictions in Kentucky, the state tax is going to decrease from 5% to 4.5% in 2023. Don't mark my words on that. Do your own research, but that would be cool. Okay, so let's get right to it. Let's talk about some neighborhoods that are attractive to retirees in these areas, Elizabethtown and Bowling Green. Now, these neighborhoods I cherry-picked because, yes, they are popular to, to buyers we work with all the time who want a low-maintenance property, um, maybe some help with yard care, um, maybe close to amenities like a pool or a clubhouse or close to medical facilities, which in Elizabethtown would be Baptist Health Hospital, HMH Plaza, which is I think mostly for physical therapy, and Fort Knox VA Clinic. In Bowling Green, some examples of nearby med facilities would be the Med Center in Bowling Green, the Bowling Green VA Clinic, TriStar Greenview Hospital, Commonwealth Regional Specialty Hospital, and several Graves Gilbert clinics all around Bowling Green. There's Graves Gilbert rehab clinics and the Southern Kentucky Rehab Clinic as well. And these communities are conveniently located to some restaurants and fun things to do. So in Elizabethtown, a couple of these communities would be Applewood, which is right off uh, Dixie Highway, right beside John Harden High School. It's got a great location right next to grocery stores and shopping and restaurants and the hospitals. Some people own their properties back in there. Some of them are rentals, but most of them are duplex type communities with low maintenance yards. They're very popular and they're pretty affordable. When they go up for sale, they go fast. So if you see one, give us a call, we'll get you in one. Also Legacy Park, which is off Ring Road. It's a popular community that's similar. Duplex type communities um, and it's got a great location, close to everything. Robinbrook Farm, which is off Robinbrook and off Patriot Parkway, kind of sits behind Kroger. Very popular community for similar reasons. Now, there are other communities like this as well, but we're just naming a few offhand just to give you an idea, or if you're doing any kind of research, or if you want us to dig a little deeper, you know, you're welcome to reach out to us. Our information's in the link below, and we can help you find one of these properties when they hit the market. So you're ready. Now in Bowling Green, 
a really nice community that offers these things is called Eagle Stone, and it's right in the heart of town, uh, nearby Cave Mill Road and off Crossings Boulevard. So the, this is more of a tighter community where the condos are kind of crunched together a little bit, but it does have a clubhouse and a really nice swimming pool, and it's convenient to just about anything you want to do in Bowling Green. We've got cute little patios too. Now the second one in Bowling Green would be Massey Springs. This is a neat community too, very close to um, Eaglestone, uh, I believe off Small House Road. And it, it offers assisted living and independent living with these villas in the, in the back part of the subdivision or the neighborhood. But there's a nice big pavilion. It's just a really cute community. Now also in Bowling Green is the Greens at Heartland. Now these are condos off Legends Drive. Um, this is a very nice community. Twin homes, duplexes, whatever you want to call them, that have low maintenance yards and right in the heart of town, close to everything. And it's very close to the Heartland Golf Course. So if you like to golf, that's a bonus too. Also right next door to the Greens is a neighborhood called Steeplechase. And it's off Lover's Lane. Again, same type of community. Now, when these go for sale, you have to jump on them fast because they will sell quickly. They don't come on the market very often, but when they do, you gotta jump on them. And the last one I'm gonna tell you about is a community called Traditions. This is a really interesting community. Now, it's located off Lover's Lane, which is near Cemetery Road, and a hop from I-65, it's so convenient. It's next to some great restaurants. There is some space to Lover's Lane right now currently, but they're putting in a few more traffic lights. So I just wouldn't count on that road being a fast commute for too much longer. <laughs> I have a feeling it's gonna turn into what Scottsville and Campbell Road are doing. It's just gonna be stop and go traffic, but it's a nice area. Traditions is beautiful and I'm going to re-record it later in another video and do a full tour because in the spring and the summer when all the leaves come in, this place is gorgeous. They've got it landscaped so nicely. Um, it's just looks like kind of a Hallmark town, something you'd see in a Hallmark movie. Uh, it's, it's not something that you see very often in these areas, um, but it's unique and it's gorgeous and there is very low maintenance, smaller yards and something that might be appealing to you when you're looking for these types of homes. There's several of them currently up for sale in there now. Some of them are ranch style, one level homes, but there are also two story homes in that community. Now, if you're looking for more of an upscale country club type community, um, there is one in Bowling Green called Old Stone and it's got a country club, it's got a fabulous pool. Now it is a little further away from town, but by further I mean maybe 10 minutes um, toward the Alberton area on the southeast side of Bowling Green, um, but it's gorgeous and it has its own separate like bridged entrance, gated community of course, on a golf course with a country club that has a fabulous restaurant and an amazing pool. Tennis courts, basketball courts, you name it, this community has it. And I've seen their pool in the summer and it looks like something that came out of a resort. <laughs> so it's very nice. There are some affordable homes in there that start in the fours, but they go up into well into the millions. So it's definitely a unique community, um, but it is, I'm mentioning it because it is a desirable community um, for some retirees in Kentucky. It's a great place to have that community feel that's just outside of town. thing I will say that might be lacking in Kentucky in the constructions that we build here are RV garages. <laughs> we would love to see some newer constructions being built with an attached RV garage. How awesome would that be? It's happening all over the West. We've seen them out West. They're building homes out there with three and four car garages, but one being a taller attached garage to put your motor home or RV in. I would love to see more of that here. We don't normally have that style of home to pick from on the hot list on what's on the market but they they do pop up every now and then or the property will have like a detached rv garage so that is a possibility but i would love to see them attaching them to the homes and having you know smaller acreage but with an rv garage how awesome would that be so i'm hoping maybe a developer or new construction builder might be listening for a moment it's a thing out west and it should be a thing here 
and those things would sell like hotcakes. So start building them. So I wanna apologize if you can hear any of that construction taking place that just started right outside my window, but it's something unavoidable when you're recording a video and sometimes unexpected things come up and create some background noise for you. Do we think all in all that Kentucky is a good place to retire? Well, yes, considering that near the Elizabethtown area, the Fort Knox area has one of the biggest imprints, as Jarrett likes to call, of military retirees in the nation. So people do like to come back to Kentucky to retire. And in Southern Kentucky is also a beautiful place to retire. But if you wanna talk more about retiring in Kentucky and possibly start your home search here, Jarrett and I are available. You can find our information in the link below. You can search our website. It's very easy to navigate. We have it set up to where you can click on a town that you wanna look at and you can browse properties right in that town. So they're separated. It's not like you have to go searching on a major website and search all over their map. You can choose Elizabethtown and see what's active. You can choose Rhineville and see what's active. Or you can choose Bowling Green and see what's active. It's kind of convenient. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We hope to see you again in about a week. We're sorry if we miss a few weeks. We are weekly-ish. <laughs> and the past few weeks, uh, Jarrett and I have been going through a little transition too. And it has been spring and the calls are coming in. So um, it is home buying season, uh, but we are not too busy for you. So don't hesitate to reach out. We'll see you guys again real soon. Bye-bye. Now there are other taxes in Kentucky, such as capital gains tax and a and, and, okay. What is that noise? We would love to see some new, I'm gonna wait for this noise to stop in the background. There's a guy drilling outside.